Today's Greek propaganda does everything it can to convince the world that ancient Macedonia was Greek and that the ancient Macedonians were Greeks. The reasons for this are merely political and well known. It is of great importance for Greece to prove that the name Macedonia and Macedonians were Greek, which would mean that today's Macedonians have no historical right to use these names. However, despite these claims, some relevant written sources say the biggest opponents of today's Greek propaganda are exactly the works of the ancient authors. A lot of these works contain clear claims that the ancient Macedonians were not Greeks or Hellenes, and that in a big part of their history, these two different nations are very unfriendly towards each other, especially because of the ancient Greeks being under Macedonian slavery for centuries. Within 40 video clips, we shall present testimonies from over 50 ancient authors who claimed the ancient Macedonians were not Greeks and that Macedonia was never Greek in the past. The data will be presented in these video clips will initiate a hard defeat on the present Greek propaganda and historiography in the world's public eyes. Arian is a well-known ancient historian. His full name was Lucius Flavius Arianus Xenophon. He lived in the 1st and 2nd century. He is also known as Arian of Nicomedia, named after his birth city located in the northwest part of today's Turkey. His most famous works are the biography of Alexander the Great, known as the Anabasis of Alexander, and Indica, which represented a description of the Macedonian army returning from India. It is well known that he based Alexander's biography mainly on the works of the Macedonian general Ptolemy and Aristobulus, who participated in Alexander's expedition. According to their now lost historical legacies, Arian clearly distinguished the Macedonians from the Greeks. We will submit several examples. It is little known that Alexander the Great of Macedonia attacked Persia. Tens of thousands of Greeks fought in the Persian army against the Macedonians. A great number of these Greeks were killed and others were enslaved and sent to work in Macedonia, while the Macedonian army advanced in Phrygia, present-day Turkey. Athens sent a delegacy to Alexander, pleading to release the Greek prisoners that were captured as members of the Persian army. In relation to this, Arian writes, Here an embassy reached Alexander from the Athenians beseeching him to release to them the Athenian prisoners who had been captured at the river Granicus, serving in the army of the Persians, and were then in Macedonia serving in chains with the 2,000 others captured in that battle. In 133 BC, the Macedonian army advanced deeper in Persia. The Persian king Darius III gathered a huge army and the famous battle at Isis took place. In relation to this, Arian writes, But as soon as Darius was certified of Alexander's approach for battle, he conveyed about 30,000 of his cavalry and with them 
20,000 of his light-armed infantry across the river Pinaros. Of the heavy-armed infantry, he placed first the 30,000 Greek mercenaries to oppose the phalanx of the Macedonians. Here we see that the number of Greeks who fought in the Persian army against Alexander the Great was at least 30,000. We can also see that these Greek units were sent to fight against the strongest part of the Macedonian army, the Macedonian phalanx. Arian says the biggest clash between the Greeks and the Macedonians happened in the battle at Isis, and the main reason for this was the great hatred between these two peoples. Arian writes, There was a violent struggle. Darius's Greeks fought to thrust the Macedonians back into the water and save the day for their left wing already in retreat. The fight was further embittered by the old racial rivalry of Greek and Macedonian. be a bigger and clearer example of the differences between the Macedonians and the Greeks than this one? The ancient historian Arian, using data and information from the Macedonian historians Ptolemy and Aristobulus, clearly wrote that the old racial rivalry existed between the Macedonians and the Greeks. This is one of the highest levels of impatience and hatred that can exist between two nations. So after reading this statement, can one claim that the Macedonians and the Greeks were the same nation? What kind of members of the same nation has racial rivalry between each other? Let the Greek propaganda respond to this. <laughs> 